totem pole. Western red cedar stands mean against the desert sky, as dust throws rings through dry air, its nature's blind defense. The faces are bleak, staring out into the world's angry cry. Was that the sound of pistols screaming, or bison sprinting? Or was it cool water flowing in the distant hills of glory's range? These idols will be covered in dust when they fall softly, so softly on the tempered ground, to lay soundly in the heat waves of the sun's kingdom, shadowed by fine minerals and flakes of stone. With the appearance of bones, or maybe just one solid bone, chiseled by the hands of God's red creatures, the naturals, warriors of the spear and arrow hunters of the whispering wind, men and women of earth. It is the rounds of light and dark that mark their journey while their seminal relatives dance through green corn in the Southlands. It is the sounds of wandering creatures that gain wisdom's leaf, carved into these effigies of wood temples. It is in the souls of these forged marvels that sky breaths are possessed, like meditating on soft waters. Deep down in the grain of year-born lines are the elements of spirit that cannot be captured or held, as if silver sands in the palm of the hand turned to liquid gold that streamed onward to reunite with the dirt burrowed in the molten layers of phosphor granite and in the shelves of fossilized rock. There is no prison for these spiritual beings that hold no material meaning other than surface seeings that still astound in not only their beauty but in their ability to create holy reckoning above human understanding. They cause awakenings in far-reaching corridors of the mind, opening passages in the caverns of thought, each laughing with a scowl of indignity as one towering in both presence and density of existential essence, a lineage axle. Climb to the top and see forever in the eyes of your maker.